Welcome for this weekly video on the latest and greatest news in Ethereum and DeFi. I do this every Monday at 11 a.m. East Coast time. So today it's a little bit special. There was a problem in the initial live stream. So I had to re-record the video. So what you see here is a pre-recorded video. So today there won't be any Q&A unfortunately but 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 we're going to talk of super important stuff so in this video i'm going to be talking of east 2.0 of course we are only one day away from the deadline for the deposit contract so east 2 is 2 phase 0 is a major milestone for ethereum so depending on whether we will reach this milestone or not the price of ether could go to the moon or on the contrary it could crash to the ground if it fails so it's super super important we also have massive gains in DeFi tokens, even more crazy than last week. So I'm going to show you which project exactly went up and we're going to zoom in on the top earner for the week. This week, we're also going to have a ton of flash loan attacks in DeFi protocol. I will explain what happened exactly and how much was stolen. So if you don't know me, I'm Julian, your host. And on my channel, it the blocks, I teach blockchain development. So on November 27th, so it's this Friday at 11 a.m. East time. I will do a live training on how to get started in blockchain. So if you are a newbie and you want to get started in the blockchain industry, but you are a bit lost, you don't know where to start, this training is for you. So I will cover how to get your first blockchain job and make $100,000 a year, how to build your own blockchain project, how to make money programmatically in DeFi. So if you want to participate to this training, you need to register to receive the link. This is completely free and this will make you save a lot of time. Also, you don't need to be a technical person to understand. I've designed this training so that everybody can understand, especially beginners. So register now. You'll find the link in the description just below. So we'll start by talking of the price of Ether. So Ether is pumping like crazy this week plus 30% we as, uh, as we are approaching the launch of Ethereum 2.0, phase zero, uh, December 1st, everybody's getting super excited. So there will probably be a huge price movement on November 24th uh, at 12 p.m. UTC. And I will explain why after, and I will explain the situation on the deposit contract. When it comes to the gas price of Ethereum, so for the first time since a long time, gas price is going back up a bit. So on the one hand, it's good that we have low gas price because we can use Ethereum without, without paying huge transaction fees. But on the other end, it also means that the network is less used, which is not good. So it's probably better than the gas fee don't go down too much before we get a scaling solution. Okay, so let's talk Ethereum 2.0. So Ethereum 2.0 is the next version of Ethereum, way more scalable, which could reach up to 100,000 transactions per second to be compared with 15 transactions per second currently. So the first phase of Ethereum 2.0, phase zero, is supposed to start next month. But for that to happen, we need to lock a certain number of Ether to secure the network. 524,288 ether to be precise and at current prices that's a bit more than 300 million of dollar worth of ether so people who lock their ether will be able to earn a return of between 5 to 20 percent depending on the numbers of a validator but they need to accept to lock the ether for several years so <laughs> that's the catch the deadline to reach this number 500,000 something the deadline is tomorrow, November 24th at 12 p.m. UTC. And currently we are at about 60% of uh, of the amount required. Oh, I think actually now, the, yeah, since I last checked, it's actually went up. So I think we're like even higher now. So we still need uh, we still need some ether, but we, we're getting closer. So tomorrow at 12 p.m. UTC, there are two options. Option one, we have enough ether locked and phase zero of ether 2.0 will start on December 1st as initially planned. So that's a huge vote of confidence for Ethereum. The price will go up even more and by the end of the year, it will probably reach 1000 ether. Option two, we don't have enough ether locked tomorrow. Phase zero of Ethereum 2.0 will be delayed. Although it wouldn't be the end of the world, it would for sure spook some investors and the price of Ether will have a big correction. So the big question is, will we reach the threshold tomorrow? A lot of people assume that the rate of deposit is a little bit uh, too slow, but it's important to know that there are two reasons why people want to delay the deposit. 
First, people want to keep earning money by using their ETH in DeFi protocol until the very end. There is no reason to lock your ETH before the deadline, except maybe that the gas fee will increase very close to the deadline. Second, people also want to know roughly how many Ether will be locked in a contract when we are close to the deadline. And they need to know this in order to evaluate how much they will uh, earn. So 524,288 Ether is just a minimum, but we can lock more and probably we will actually lock more. The more ETH is a lock, the less the yield, which is paid to validators. So we have two reasons that explain why people will want to wait until the very last moment to stake the Ether into Ether 2.0. And finally, finally, last thing, if we still don't have enough Ether tomorrow, even after everything I explained, I'm pretty sure that the Ethereum Foundation has some sort of contingency plans to use its Ether, Ether stash to contribute to Ether 2.0, if needed. The Ethereum Foundation has about 0.6% of the total ETH supply. That's about 678,000 Ether. So even by using just a part of their war chest, they could complete the missing chunk of Ether in the deposit contract. So if you're interested in staking yourself, check out my last two videos where I explain how to run a validator and how to build your own staking pool, which allow you to stake less than 32 Ether. Next, we're going to talk of the DeFi market caps. So this week we are at 14 billion, that's 400 million more than last week. So it's going up. However, when you have a look at the chart in terms of Ether, then the picture is not so rosy. Actually, you see a sharp decrease in, in the number of ETH, which is locked in DeFi. And so we can explain part of this with Ethereum 2.0. Part of this Ether is locked into Ethereum 2.0, but that only explain a small fraction of this because for Ethereum 2.0, we only need 500,000 something Ether, but here we can see a decline in the order of, uh, of millions. So yeah, I mean, really uh, there is clearly a decrease of uh, in the number of Ether that is locked in DeFi. So Ether is going up and DeFi yields are also good. So uh, why people are withdrawing the Ether from DeFi. Well, recently there were a lot of hacks, so maybe that it spooked some investors. So I think that's really the main explanation. Uh, and, uh, and also another thing to note is that in terms of market cap for a few DeFi protocol, so Uniswap went down a lot because the liquidity mining program ended and a lot of this liquidity actually went to SushiSwap. But I think that after some time it will return to Uniswap. Actually, they are uh, discussing, the community of Uniswap is discussing to re-implement, to restart the liquidity mining incentive with uh, maybe a, a lower reward for liquidity provider. Okay, so next we're gonna see uh, what happened to DeFi token this week. So uh, this week is even more crazy than last week. So we have something like 80% uh, of the top 100 uh, top 100 uh, DeFi token going up. So it's really, really beautiful. We get a massive 600% for SFI token. So this is the token of Saffron Finance. And the funny story, actually, I got contacted to work for them. And I say no, stupid me. I'm sure I would have received some SFI coins in this in a, in a package. So <laughs> stupid me, I'll be a millionaire by now. Uh, okay, so what is this Saffron Finance project and why the token is going up? I will discuss this just after. We also got a huge increase for IETH. So this is a token traded on the synthetics protocol. This is uh, supposed to be the contrary of ETH. When ETH goes up, it is supposed to go down and conversely. So I really, really do understand why it went up uh, because ETH went up a lot. So IETH should be done by now. Um, then we also have the SYN token. So uh, that's the token of a new protocol called SYNLEV. So this is a protocol to do some margin trading. For example, you can get a three-time exposure to Ether. And a couple of days ago, they announced their integration with the Oracle of Chainlink. Also, we have uh, HGET. So uh, this is a protocol for hedging your crypto positions with option. Recently, we actually saw a lot of uh, options protocol in DeFi. This is getting really, really popular. And uh, also, we got a nice uh, progression for uh, Frontier. So that's a protocol to manage your DeFi across blockchain. So it's a bit like Instadab, but cross-chain. And uh, also a nice progression for uh, 
EasyFi, so that's a lending protocol for layer two, which promised to offer a cheaper way to borrow and lend tokens. And for the losers, uh, so we don't have many of them, but uh, one of the main one is Pickle, which was hacked, uh, but in general, uh, yeah, very few tokens in the red. So I will explain exactly what happened to Pickle after. So on the red side this week, so it's uh, slightly more exciting than uh, last week. So we have some nice red here, DAI USDC on DYDX, also DAI USDC and uh, and Tether on Aave, 5%, almost 6%, 7.65. Uh, and me, I still have my Tether on Compan still sleeping. <laughs> so the reason why the rates are usually lower on Compan is because this is uh, a, an older protocol that is uh, deemed uh, more secure by by investor. There is more trust in Compan, so it's no more than investor require higher interest rate for uh, other protocol. Um, so in DeFi, people tend to neglect the uh, lending protocol, but because they want like some uh, crazy rate, like 100% APR, but but that's a mistake because you can still have some very nice rate compared to what you get with your bank and at a fraction of the risk compared to the crazy yield farming. So if you have less risk appetite or you just want to park your coins between two trades, putting your coins in the lending protocol could be interesting. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit more of DeFi projects. So first, Saffron Finance. So this is the project of the top performer, uh, this of the top DeFi coin this week, SFI, so plugs 600%. So I want to explain what is Saffron Finance and why its token performs so well. So Saffron wants to tokenize liquidity provider token. So this is a complex project. Let me give an example. So let's say you lend some tokens in Compound. You get a liquidity provider token or we just say LP token. This represents your claim in the token you lent. The big risk is called impermanent loss. So basically uh, because of the way these automated market maker work, when you redeem your LP token, it's possible that you actually lose some money compared to if you had just hold on the underlying token. So what if you could reduce the risk of impermanent loss in exchange of a reduced interest rate? Well, that's exactly what Saffron Finance does. So with Saffron Finance, you send your LP token to their pool and you get another LP token. So you can choose. There are two kinds of LP token, one with higher risk and higher interest rate and another one with less risk but also less interest rate. So technically, this is as if your LP token had been turned into a bond with different trenches. So why the token of Saffron went up like crazy from November 19? So they are starting the liquidity mining program on December 1st. That's one reason. The second reason is on November 18, they were added on the coin market cap. So I think that's really what triggered the gold rush for them. And finally, the last reason is because of tokenomics. So in their pool, you have different trenches. You have the junior trench and the other one, the senior trench. So uh, the junior trench is the one get, that gives you the most money, but that is the most risky also. So Saffron Finance make you deposit SFI and DAI token to this pool and uh, so it helps to back the protocol in case of a hack. So uh, what happened was a, a positive a positive feedback loop. So the junior trench is attractive due to higher SFI yield. So users buy SFI, the price goes up, but as the price goes up, it also makes the yield of this junior trench go up, which also attract more user, but this user needs to buy some SFI in order to enter the pool. The price goes even further, etc., etc. So before you invest in Saffron, be sure to consider this. So first, this is a very young project. He has an anonymous team. His code is not audited. His code has some very business complex logic, which uh, make it more likely to have more bugs. And finally, the product of Saffron Finance is very similar to what we call CDO bonds. Uh, and these CDO bonds were the main culprit for the financial crisis in 2008. So in other words, it's an extremely risky project, probably the most risky I've ever seen. So be super, super careful. Okay, so next we're going to talk of DeFi hack. So 
this week actually a lot of hacks first Pico was hacked for 20 million dollar on November 21st so first what's Pico so Pico is an on-chain asset manager a little bit like Yuan Finance so on Pico the equivalent of a pool is called a jar so you invest tokens in a jar on Pico Finance and you reinvest this to and um, and Pico Finance reinvest these tokens in other DeFi protocol to generate some yield so recently the team of Pico deployed a new jar related to DAI this jar had several flows that were exploded right away by the hacker. The hack itself it was pretty complex, but from a high level perspective, the flow was that Pico, like many other DeFi protocol, make itself updatable by having part of its logic swappable. So in the case of Pico, it was possible to add a new jar, so which is a new investment strategy basically. And once this new strategy is deployed, um, the problem, is that this kind of new strategy they may not receive the same amount of testing than with the core contract and this can lead to vulnerability so uh, when you want to make your system more flexible with swappable logic uh, it can actually make your system more dangerous okay so then next hack origin protocol so origin protocol was hacked for eight million so Origin Protocol is a uh, stable coin which is uh, backed by other stable coin and it has a built-in yield farming mechanism. So you just have to hold the stable coin and it will automatically accrue some interest and the interest is converted into the stable coin. So it's super, super convenient. So the hack uh, used a flash loan plus a re-entrancy bug. So I'm super surprised that they were exploded for a re-entrancy bug because at this point this is re-entrancy bugs are very well known we, we know what it is and we know how to avoid them so yeah very surprising um, there is a bounty of one million dollar for anybody who offered to some information about the hacker and finally last hack of the week cheese bank was hacked for 3.3 million so cheese bank is a new lending protocol on steroids if for the first phase they only have a uh, yield farming feature where basically you buy the governance token you you stake it and you get some reward so someone used a flash loan to steal 3.3 .3 million dollar so it's the same technique that was used for uh, other DeFi hack with flash loans so first the borrow money was a flash loan so with this money they able to move the price of a token on Uniswap, so in this case that was the governance token of the protocol. Then they deposited some money in the pool of uh, of Cheese Bank to and uh, they, they get some LP token in exchange. Then they move the price of the governance token of the project on uh, on Uniswap, but in the other direction this time. And finally, they redeem the LP token. They get back the initial investment plus some profit because they manipulated the price of this LP token on uh, thanks to the manipulation on Uniswap so the big big uh, the big big uh, problem here was that in the smart contract of Cheese Bank they were relying on the on-chain oracle of Uniswap but this is very dangerous and it's not the first time this happens so I'm a bit surprised that they were hacked for that okay so next last hack so godaddy which is the biggest hosting company it's also one of the biggest domain registers so when you buy a domain name uh, you can use godaddy and uh, a couple of crypto services were targeted so basically what happened is hackers were able to redirect domain name of some crypto project so this is not DeFi project but only some centralized project uh, the hacking method was pretty simple it's what we call social engineering so it's basically a hacker will call employee of godaddy and pretend that maybe they are their boss and they are in a meeting and they are in a rush and they need the access to something really quickly and the employees under pressure uh, answer very quickly and, and give some and, and give the info basically so basically people were redirected to fake version of all these uh, the crypto projects but fortunately there was no password stolen no money stolen at all uh, but still this is quite scary actually to give a bit of context there was 
almost exactly the same kind of hack happening to my crypto wallet. I think it happened a couple of years ago, but in this case, unfortunately, people lost millions of dollars. So the lesson is if you are building your own blockchain project, you should never delegate the management of domain name to employee. This is too important. Uh, you should manage this yourself. Okay, so next news. Zapper raised $1.5 million from Coinbase Venture and another investment fund. So Zapper is a dashboard for DeFi. So with one interface, you can manage all your DeFi investment. That's a little bit similar to Instadap or Zerion. And so they already raised $1.5 million this summer. So yeah, I mean, that's a really good sign when you have a blockchain project that repeatedly raise money uh, in a short time that really means they have a lot of traction that also means that they are going to hire a lot of people so if you're a blockchain developer you're looking for a job uh, that's a good idea to contact that sort of project when just after they raise money okay so now news for developers so first there is a new version of solidity uh, not much new for developers actually, it's mostly bug fixes and compiler features, but still you have to update your Solidity version in your project. Uh, then an update for Web3J, the Java version of Web3. So the main version of Web3 is in JavaScript, but you also have some implementation in other languages. If you can, it's better to stay with the JavaScript version because it's the best maintained, but sometimes you have no choice and you have to use other languages. So for example, if you are doing a native app on Android, you have to use Java. Uh, then an update on Fe, and I don't know if how we pronounce it. This is a new language for smart contract. It will be the successor of a Viper and it will have a very Pythonic syntax. So the main language for smart contract will probably remain Solidity, but uh, this one, might become popular once it's released. We'll, we'll see. Then a new tool, I don't know how to pronounce this, ETTE. So that's a new tool to index the data of Ethereum and expose it with the REST API. So it's written in Golang. It uses two databases, Redis and PostgreSQL. It's very useful if you want to access historical data of the blockchain in a simple way. So for example, you could build a blockchain explorer like Etherscan with this tool. Sometimes some people ask me if we can do backend blockchain project. Well, this is a very good example of a backend blockchain project. And uh, then we have EastFlow, which is a visual interface to query the API of Ethereum. So it's built by QuickNode, which is an Ethereum API service similar to Infura. So EastFlow is a bit similar to Postman, but for blockchain. So you can connect it to different kind of node like Ganache. It's very useful if you want to explore the API of Ethereum in an interactive way. Okay, so uh, that's it for the news of this week. So usually when we do a live stream, then this is the time when we do the Q&A, but this time, because I told you I had this problem with the live stream, so this is actually a pre-recorded video. So we cannot do uh, the Q&A this week, unfortunately, but, 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 be aware that this week is a little bit special. So first of all, I will have my live training this Friday. So make sure to register for it. It is a live training about how to get started in blockchain. You'll find the link in the description. And because this is a special week, I will do a new video every day. So yeah, more video uh, this week. Okay, guys, that's it for this video on the news of Ethereum and DeFi. I'll see you for another video. Bye.